Thank you, Michael. Today we are providing a very condensed version of function point analysis and its uses and benefits. We will briefly cover the objectives of function point analysis, the benefits of function point analysis, a very high level view of function point analysis commonly called FPA, and the details of the function point counting process and rules including the types of counts, the steps in counting, the sizing of data functions, the sizing of transactional functions, and the evaluation of general system characteristics. We might also call this primer a scamper through function points because it will be short. Function point analysis is a method, much like lines of code, use cases, or object classes, for measuring a software application or a project. Function point analysis is consistent, easy to learn, available early in the life cycle of the development process, and has an acceptable level of accuracy. Function points measure the functionality that the user requests and receives, both for the software development process and maintenance, and does so independently of the technology used for implementation. Function points provide a vehicle to estimate the cost and resources required for software development, enhancement, and maintenance. It also provides a tool to quantify performance levels, such as we have with SEI, CMMI, and to monitor progress made from software process improvement initiatives. Function points provide a tool to determine the benefits of an application to an organization by counting the functions that specifically match the user requirements. And function point is also a tool that can be used to size or evaluate purchased application packages. Essentially, function points measure data functions consisting of internal groupings of data called internal logical files, or ILFs as well as external groupings of data or external interface files known as EIFs. It also includes transactional functions such as external inputs or EIs, external outputs or EOs, and external inquiries, EQs. And general system characteristics or GSCs which may be used with the IFPUG methodology, but are not recognized by ISIL. And we'll cover more about that later. We follow a specific process and sequence in sizing function points. First, by determining the type of function point count. Next, by identifying the counting scope and application boundary. Then, evaluating the data functions to determine their contribution to a function point count, followed by evaluating the transactional functions to determine their contribution to the function point count, and then possibly determining the value adjustment factor from 14 general system characteristics. The remainder of this presentation will address each one of these processes. There are three different types of counts. A development project function point count measures the functions provided to a user with the first installation of the software when the project is complete. The second type of count is an enhancement project function point count, which measures modifications to existing applications when we add, change, or delete user functionality delivered by the project. And that wouldn't include the correction of errors, but it would be strictly modifications by the users themselves who have changed what they expect to be achieved by that particular application. When functionality is revised by an enhancement project, the application count must also be updated from the original project count 
to reflect any changes in the application's functionality. So finally, we have the third type of count, which is the application function point count. An application function point count measures an installed application. It's also called a baseline or an installed count, and it reflects the value of a particular application at the time the count is done. If the number, its number is initialized when the development project is completed, and of course it's updated every time the completion of an enhancement project changes the application's functions. Before we perform a count, we establish the scope or purpose of the count, which essentially provides an answer to a business problem. The scope then influences the positioning of the boundary or boundaries of multiple applications between the software that we're sizing and the surrounding software as well as the business users of the software itself. Slide 13 displays an application boundary which depicts external inputs, external outputs, and external inquiries crossing over the boundary, either to or from a user or another application. It reflects internal logical files that are maintained, in, excuse me, maintained within the boundary. And we also have external interface files, which include data access from logical files that are maintained outside of the boundary. I will now discuss each of those individual function types. First, data functions. Data functions represent the functionality provided to the users to be logical, and that's not physical file structures, but logical internal and external data requirements. And of course, it consists of, as I just discussed, internal logical files, ILS, or external interface files, EIFs. Hence, we could have ILFs and EIFs regardless of the type of database that we are sizing. In other words, the physical database itself doesn't determine what the files are, the logical nature. An ILF then is a user identifiable group of data. maintained within the application boundary itself. The primary intent of an ILF is to hold data maintained through one or more elementary transactions, which are typically external inputs, but also might include an external output in those cases where the output itself updates the database. The group of data or control information must be logical, and the group of data would be recognized by the business user as such. The group of data must be maintained through an elementary process, a transaction, as I just said, an external input or occasionally an external output within the application being counted. Internal logical files contain application transaction data maintained within the application. For example, one ILF might contain information about a customer. Another one may contain information about items carried in stock. In other words, the stock levels, the 